Hello everyone, myself Kaushal Bhargav. I am assistant professor in Botany Department, Jakir Hussain Delhi College. On behalf of Botany Department, Jakir Hussain Delhi College, I would like to introduce our today's speaker, Dr. Somdatta Sina Roy. Presently, Dr. Roy is working as assistant professor in Miranda House, University of Delhi. Dr. Roy has done his graduation masters and phd from university of delhi she has published many research papers in reputed journals that include 12 peer reviewed publications two book chapters 18 peer reviewed abstract 13 poster she has done circular resource material preparation eight times she has more than of teaching experience dr roy worked as research associate in Center for Environment Management for Degraded Ecosystem. Then she worked as senior associate in same center in University of Delhi. Dr. Roy worked as postdoctoral associate in Department of Cancer, Biology and Biochemistry at Nashville, USA. Then she worked as postdoctoral research associate in breast cancer program, Department of Oncology Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center at John Hopkins, Baltimore, USA. Now I invite Dr. Somdatta Sina Roy to deliver her lecture. I am pretty sure you will be greatly benefited from her lecture. Thank you. Hello, good day everyone. Uh, my name is Somdatta Sina Roy and I teach botany at Miranda House. And today I'm going to talk about types of data uh, which are used uh, in biostatistics. So I'm going to start my presentation now. And uh, you can, at the end of the lecture, if you have any uh, questions or queries, my email ID is given at the end of the presentation. So you can uh, feel free to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, contact me at any time to ask anything uh, which is there for this lecture. So uh, I'll just start my presentation and uh, I hope uh, you'll be able to. So uh, what we are doing today is, uh, you know, we are going to uh, uh, talk about types of data in biostatistics, okay? What is the classification of data? How we can classify data or in biostatistics? So to begin with, I'm sure that other speakers have also talked about this, but let us uh, see what is biostatistics, okay? So what is biostatistics? Biostatistics is uh, basically the application of statistical method to the biological sciences, okay? So the range of biostatistics is very large. You can apply biostatistics in almost every, you know, a facet of biological sciences, whether it is uh, medical sciences, it is, uh, you know, uh, agricultural sciences, it's ecological sciences. So every facet of uh, biological sciences, you can, uh, uh, you know, apply biostatistical method. And actually, every kind of, uh, you know, research that we do nowadays needs the support of biostatistics to be valid and to be published. Okay, so having said that, let's move on. And let us see what is a data now in biostatistics. What is a data? Data in biostatistics is basically an individual observation, okay? It is based on the individual observation. So observation is what, or the it's actually the measurements, okay? Any kind of measurement. It can be, uh, you know, a, you it can be a gene expression. It can be the number of plants in a quadrant. Doesn't matter. But each, uh, you know, observation or measurement that is taken, okay? Uh, on the smallest sampling unit, okay, that becomes your part of your data, okay. So, smallest uh, sampling units, a lot of times uh, is, uh, it's not necessary, but a lot of time it is actually the individuals in the ordinary biology 
practical sense. So let us see uh, an example of this. So uh, suppose I have 100 rats, OK? So uh, 100 rats, and I want to know what is the average weight or the mean weight of the rat, OK? So what will I do? I will take individually, I will weigh each of them. And so each weight of the individual rat is what is each datum or you know data point for this okay so uh if you so all hundred together will now represent my sample of observations from which i will do my further you know calculations and i will uh you know uh use it uh, for other uh, doing other things right so this collection of individual observations selected or done by a specific procedure is what is your sample of observation in this case i am just giving you an example of weight of rats right so now let's move further and understand because see uh, when we are uh, collecting data we are collecting data for answering a specific question now, most of the questions that we, we uh, need to under, uh, answer is basically uh, a population. We, we kind of, you know, if we ask, uh, you know, what is the average weight of, uh, you know, 20-year-old uh, people in India? So we are talking about the whole population of India, okay? So here I've given you an example where the, where the question is, what is the diastolic blood pressure of or, you know different in different metropolitan cities suppose anybody wants to know what is the effect of you know the lockdown on the blood pressure of different people okay because everybody is under stress right so somebody wants to do that study it's all you know uh it's all made up okay that uh, yeah except this population data i have taken it from uh, like i've mentioned already uh but uh other than that it's just a you know um, it's just a made up problem. Okay. So suppose I want to know, and I, I am in Delhi. So I want to know uh, for Delhi, I'm participating in this study, and I want to know what is the average uh, mean uh, diastolic blood pressure for the Delhi population. So, as you know, Delhi is a very big city. And so, can I really go door to door and measure every person? So it becomes very uh, like almost impossible to do that right so then what will i do i what i can do okay so uh, this is a made up number okay this is a completely made up number but you need to remember this uh, so what i can do is that i can take what we call a sample sample from the population of delhi okay so my sample size Okay, so now I'm talking about how much data we should be collecting or what should be my sample size to give me a meaningful uh, result for my study, right? So sample size, if I suppose I, I have taken 25 people across the you know population of Delhi, I've just collected 25 people and I see that the mean pressure or the mean blood pressure is coming out to be 67, okay? Now, I think, you know, something may be wrong and somebody advises me that, okay, no, you need to increase the size. So I go ahead and now I have taken, I've like, you know, made it four times and I have taken 100 persons. Okay. So now I see that my mean also has changed because the number of people I've collected is more. So uh, mean pressure now I am getting as 72 so now somebody tells me, okay, the, it's in like, you know, millions of people are there. So we need to increase the sample size more because somebody tells me I already kind of, you know, at back of the mind that my blood pressure is around 78. That is what I showed you in the last slide. Okay. This is a, this is a made up number. Okay. So, but I, for this to make you understand, you have to remember that the actual population mean is 78. Now we see that when we have taken 1000 people, the mean pressure comes out to be 75. Okay. So that tells us that, you know, population, uh, what we are trying to when we are taking a sample and we are trying to, you know, estimate 
the sam we are taking the sample and we are trying to estimate the mean value for the population right so when we are doing that we have to be very very careful about the data that we collect from the sample so as you can as you saw in the last slide you know when uh, when you have a very large population you want to take you know the most accurate one will be if i can go door to door but i cannot do that right so but we have to make sure that the data that we collect is representative of the population so we cannot just you know go ahead and for a million plus uh, you know population we cannot just take 25 samples and say okay this is the mean for my population okay so that is why we are have to be very careful about the data that we collect and the sample that we choose when we are collecting the uh, you know uh, the data for the uh you know the whole population and we are trying to do some biostatistical studies fine so now uh how do we collect data we collect data on uh, obviously like i explained we cannot really do it for the whole population so we kind of you know we set up the experiment or we take you know data from sample we'll see how things are uh so we kind of take a sample of the population and we take the data for for that sample and we draw conclusions or make inferences for the entire population okay so data whatever we collect okay in our experiments or in our uh, you know laboratories or in our colleges uh, you know those are all the data that uh, you know basically represents a sample and that sample represents the uh, whole population so that is something that you need to remember okay so now uh, what is a data data is actual information okay so data uh, like you know there's a saying in uh, statistics that data will never lie it is how good or bad your statistician is or you know how truthful your statistician is will depend what conclusions you are getting okay so uh, data is actual you know collection of information so there are different ways of collection and i'm sure somebody else is going to talk about it so it is uh, it's a proof of occurrence so if i say uh, there is an increase in suppose uh, some disease or suppose like you know the dengue in uh, the occurrence of dengue increases in the month of november october november then there should be actual numbers okay these many people are coming in with dengue and that is as compared to like if you have taken the data in uh, like you know from uh, throughout the year you find that okay these two months the number of people having dengue increases so that is why you can you know you do other things and sorry uh, and you kind of conclude so th that that is not an assumption that is what i'm trying to say it is not a prediction uh you know it's not an assumption it so if anybody is giving you a you know a data to uh, you know support any uh, you know uh, conclusion that is when you are supposed to believe it right so uh, that is what uh, is data data is actual actual uh, information okay proof of occurrence so that is what if i say my seedling uh, you know uh, my average height of my seedling Uh, of zea maize uh, at 7 days after germination is uh, 10.5 cm then i should have a data actual numbers where i have calculated and i have you know reached to this mean number fine so data is something that is actual and it is uh, you know it is a proof of occurrence of a thing of an event and it is proven by scientific method or statistical method right so let us see then so why should we know the types of data okay that is a question uh, that is important that why why are we bothered you know what kind of a data we are collecting so remember that you are collecting data to prove uh, you know something you have a question 
or you uh, you are asking a question whether it is a scientific question or a social question uh, does not matter statistics is used everywhere but since we are dealing with biostatistics so we are going to be you know saying that you know it can be you know if my uh, fertilizer that i have new fertilizer is useful or is better than my old fertilizer it can be a new drug for cancer which is giving me a better result any problem like you know you have a problem and you're collecting the data to uh you know you know talk about that problem or find a solution for that problem right so the kind of data that you have you know helps you to identify the problem correctly and also it helps you to analyze that so what analysis tools so by statistics gives you a certain you know analysis tools which you can use so what kind of tool you want to use for your problem or for your data depends on the type of data that you collect okay and once you know and once you've correct uh, you know correctly collected the data you get that those stronger results which proves your you know which proves you or disproves a certain thing so stronger results come from a uh, you know a stronger data collected okay and that is why it is very important to know the kinds of data which you can have and what are the classifications so that you can go about you know solving your problem correctly so next of uh, so the first you know so now we come to the types of data so the first uh, kind of data and the most uh, you know maybe the most common you know thing that you come across or you know without even uh, realizing that you know about the type of data is the data by its nature what is the nature of the data that you uh, are dealing with is it a qualitative data or is it a quantitative data so very simply like i put this ye quantitative data is something that you can measure right you can count you can measure you can right away put a number to it okay so your you know uh, m like this yes your what is your weight height all these are quantitative data part of quantitative data why because you are able to measure it right whereas the qualitative data is mostly what you know involves your senses so it is basically uh, you know a uh, color of sometimes you know you may have done in your uh, colleges you know we do few experiments in the lab that we are measuring you know color development and we'll put you know whether this is you know dark blue or a light blue so we'll put one single plus or double plus or a triple plus you know so we can uh, you know but keep okay the color developed yes or no some things like that okay so those are qualitative data because you cannot put a really a number on it okay color development till you put it on a you know spectroscope you cannot get any number out right so if you're just doing a visual uh, observation so that is a qualitative data that you are doing when you are just kind of based on your own senses whether it is temperature whether it is color whether it is smell so based on your observation or your senses you are kind of you know collecting the data present absent kind so uh, like i said so what like we'll just kind of go through you know what is the difference basic difference between the qualitative and quantitative data so quantitative data first so quantitative uh, variables okay so data data is basically uh, you know the, uh, you are talking about variables right the length uh, you know your height uh, length height weight you know temperature so these are the variables okay so you will collect data according to the variables if you if i am talking about molecular biology or you know protein uh, running a gel so you know the actual uh, you know if you have bands how you know how many bands you are getting or how uh, bright uh, signal you are getting so those are measurable things right so you will measure and then you will apply your thing so these are quantitative data so quantitative variables basically tells you how many so i put three questions how many how much how often so you will how if you are asking the question how 
okay how many how much how often then you are basically collecting a quantitative data and you will have numerical values at the end of it okay and so and most of these data the quantitative data you can directly put uh you know you can use them to you know in regression models doing an over and you know uh finding out the means like central tendencies and dispersions and distributions and all that okay so these are quantitative data now what are the qualitative data so qualitative data basically focusing focuses on the quality like okay so it is basically mostly it will uh, ask you why behind the number why am i getting why am i getting a higher number why because suppose i am saying my od uh, value increases so i have a number why because the amount of blue blue uh, if i am getting a blue color in some reaction the amount the concentration of the blue has increased so i can you know qualitative or versus quantitative so if you are getting a number you're putting a number it becomes quantitative if it you are just talking about the nature and you're describing okay uh then it is a qualitative so popular so data analysis can be done on these also but uh, you know you have different sets thematic analysis discourse analysis and all that so uh, these are not very common and uh, later on like uh, you know we talk about sometimes qualitative data we can put certain you know numbers so we'll talk about it later we can put numbers and we can arrange them grade them and we can then further you know do calculations on them so this uh, so these are not biological yeah but i found this so uh, again like just the examples of qualitative and quantitative data and where you know so any any kind of you know so when you are talking about numericals you are, are giving numbers it it is a quantitative data versus when you are just you know categorizing and you uh, are explaining you know what is there it is a qualitative data right so generally when you are approaching a problem lot of time you will approach it both the ways qualitative and quantitative data has you know should be collected and that complements each other and gives you a better uh, you know uh, study now uh, coming uh, to again uh, you know variable like i said the variables are there so you have qualitative and uh, so categorical and uh, numerical so qualitative data is what you are ca uh, you know categorizing and the, those can be nominal ordinal uh, so nominal is just the name and uh, we will do the next category of data so we'll explain it later ordinal is when it is ordered in the categories are ordered okay so when you have put numbers like this is number 1 2 3 so you have kind of ranked them that is ordinal okay now numerical data or quantitative data can be of two kinds so which we are going to look at it now so discrete or continuous okay so you can have numerical values which are discrete which are single numbers or you can have a continuous so let us just see it in little bit more detail because this is what we generally will be coming across in our classrooms and when we are doing the work at this level okay so what are discrete variables let us try to understand this okay so when your variable okay has only a fixed numerical value okay something like you know i have two hands so i cannot matlab you know uh, in general human beings will have two hands it will not be 1.7 or 1.5 or 1.6 okay it is a full number so you will not have a decimal number okay similarly the example which is given here insect appendages okay it may be 4 or 5 or 6 but it's never a 5.1 or a 4.3 that's what is uh, you know i'm just uh, reading it out from the slide that i put so things like this okay so these are also called discrete variables or discontinuous variables so given like number of teeth okay bristles grains even your in your uh, you know number of leaves or if you if you had uh you know counting the number of leaflets in a compound leaf right those are whole numbers it's never a point something right so those are called discrete variable or discontinuous variable okay because 
continuous me uh, continuous variable let us see let us to understand okay what is a continuous variable okay continuous variable is basically suppose uh, you know uh, you have two lengths uh, 1.5 and 1.6 is the example given here you can consider it 1 and 1 uh, 1 and 2 okay so two whole numbers but as we know that you can have you know between 1 and 2 you can have an infinite number of numbers one come as a big case 1.1 1.2 1.3 1.4 1.5 1.6 so on till 2 right or even we can go like 1.11 1.12 1.13 so depending on how many decimals you are taking so between when you're talking about continuous variables between two numbers you can have n number of infinite numbers okay so suppose i i have this pen okay now i have this pen i want to measure this pen the length of the pen right so depending on depending on what kind of scale i'm using right i can use a normal you know uh scale i think uh, we do it uh, uh, in physics uh you know uh somewhere in i remember doing it in ninth maybe ninth or tenth that you may want to measure so how accurately you want to measure it depends on the scale that you are choosing right if i am just choosing have a you know 15 centimeter the small uh, geometry box scale i'll measure it and i'll tell you a scale. if i have a vernier caliper i'll measure it 1.55 or like you know whatever is a, yeah. suppose this is six centimeters 6.55 you know in length with uh, with only the thing i measure it as 6.5 maybe with vernier caliper i measure it one decimal more with suppose uh, even higher some other instruments i will screw gauge and all i will kind of you know more accurate you know in decimal terms more accurate okay so the whole idea of telling you this is that these kind of variables like length and like weight volume so it depends on how many points after decimal you are taking right so these are called continuous variable okay so i am sure like you know so when you are making a you know a frequency distribution for continuous or discontinuous variables you kind of make it like that okay the class uh, classes also are made uh, differently depending on whether you are dealing with a continuous variable or a uh, discontinuous or discrete variable okay so that is something which comes under quantitative data that you collect okay the variables okay so you have to remember this that there are two kinds of variables under quantitative data the quantitative data can have two different kind of variables depending on what you are measuring okay if it's just the number that you're measuring number of you know uh, maybe a number of grains in a um, panicle of uh, uh, you know panicle of a grass or a number of uh, roots which are there so you will measure the whole numbers okay number of this number of that number of petals in a flower number of uh, you know so all that but when you are talking about lengths and volumes and weights okay uh, time so those are you know continuous variable okay so please remember this so uh, the next one okay so now we move to the second category of uh, you know uh, in the type of data which is the data based on the scale of measurement now this is related to the last one so uh, you know you have four different kinds nominal ordinal ratio and interval okay so these are the scale of based on the scale of measurement now what is a nominal data so technically what we saw now uh, like let us just go back and connect it to the other side so nominal and ordinal data are mostly the qualitative data though you can put uh, certain numbers on on you know finally you can put certain numbers and do certain calculations mostly nominal and ordinal data are qualitative data whereas interval and ratio scale data are uh, the quantitative data right so nominal data uh, you know just uh, let us just uh, see the in detail what all four of them mean 
and but you have to remember that you know levels of measurement may nominal is uh, very simple and in the basic uh, you know so nominal just named so you're just named male female okay uh, sick healthy something like that okay then you have ordinal ordinal is basically it is named but they are also ordered okay so you have given numbers to them okay this is my first this is my second this is my third this is my fourth so you have that is the ordinal okay now interval scale interval scale is when you have proportionate interval between the variables okay so we will see it in detail when we uh, you know do so interval can it is named it is order plus there is a proportionate area and ratio scale is the the highest level which can accumulate accommodate the actual zero so interval scale ke saath ye hota hai ki we do not know like the actual zero right so it is basically intervals are measured but the zero is not you don't know ki which one is zero we'll do when we do it in detail we'll uh, you know see that but uh, this is the so suppose you have this okay so number assigned to the runners this is the example the picture that i have taken from the net so number assigned so you have number 7 8 and 3 okay now ordinal mein kya hoga you have ranked the thing okay this is first place uh second place and third place okay so isko humne ek rank de diya first second third ka so that become now we are perform- rating the performance interval scale aage we are rating the performance so you have rated it on 10 0 to 10 scale mein this is 9.6 this is 9.1 this is 8.2 so you have given certain numbers okay so that is the interval scale now you you are given you are looking at the time that is the exact right zero se shuru hua tha kitne time pe pahuncha you know exactly what has happened so this guy has taken 13.4 first jo aaya second one has taken 14.1 and the third person has taken 15.2 you know exactly you know what 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 was the zero and what 13.4 means right so that is your ratio scale okay so these are example let us go further and see exactly so nominal scale okay the first one is the nominal scale as i said nominal scale basically uh, means naming nominal means name okay so you are basically you are able to classify your data whatever you collecting into specific mutually exclusive groups okay or categories okay so that is what is a nominal scale so kafi bar like that, uh, cancer diagnostic like you may have heard also you know you have this stages right stage 1 2 3 4 okay what stage of cancer so these are this is a nominal scale you somebody has taken observation they have a set of you know features and they have categorized ki ye wale mujhe features dikh rahe hain so this is stage 1 ye wale features dikh but these stage 1 and stage 2 if you see these are completely uh, like you know mutually exclusive okay so uh, other example is when you have dichotomies male female aapne forms bhare honge wahan pe hoga male female hai na you to mark so under 65 over 65 child adult married non married so these are like dichotomies and these are all like you know nominal scale so this you are basically what you have done is you have just given name to a set okay uh, so that is the nominal scale now when so, sometimes you put a number or the order you rank it okay then it becomes a ordinal scale you've taken the data in terms of ordinal scale so um, you know category when uh, you know observations uh, you know not only is varying from category to category but you can rank them ओके सो काफी बार लाइक स्पेशली हॉस्पिटल्स में जब जाते हो यू हैव कि भी डॉक्टर आके बता के अच्छा इंप्रूव है नॉट इंप्रूव है यू नो लिटिल इंप्रूवमेंट है कंप्लीटली यू नो इंप्रूव है यू नो डिफरेंट क्लासेस इट कैन एंड दे कैन रैंक इट राइट दिस इज माय रैंक वन जो एकदम ठीक हो गया वो रैंक वन है या मे बी एकदम बीमार है वो रैंक वन है एंड देन यू हैव डिफरेंट क्लासेस सो यू कैन काइंड ऑफ रैंक देम 
राइट सिमिलरली लाइक देर इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑन दिस लाइ दैट टॉक्स अबाउट इंटेलिजेंस काफी बार आपने सुना होगा राइट इन वेरी इंटेलिजेंट average intelligence below inte- you know average something like that so you have a scale right you want to put numbers you can put numbers on them this is my category 1 2 3 4 rank 1 2 3 4 so these are ordinal data where you can rank your thing okay so kafi baar jaise uh, you know jaise uh, descriptive data hote something like you know uh, you know beauty pages mein maybe like you know very beautiful uh you know this is my you have you have 10 candidates and you rank them right you have rank them so beauty is a descriptive data is a qualitative data you cannot put numbers there but you can rank them according to obviously those are personal choices but you can rank them so that is what is an ordinal scale right then uh, we move to more you know uh, you know numbers jahan pe bahut clear hai interval scale so this is a more sophisticated than the other two nominal and ordinal uh, example is again uh, like you know measurements jo hote hain so you have uh, sometimes like you know when you are uh, temperature measurements mein especially the fahrenheit and celsius scale is a very uh, you know good examples of this why because uh, you know उसमें जो जीरो डिग्री मार्क है इन दीज टू स्केल्स दोज आर नॉट एप्सोल्यूट जीरो मेनी ऑफ यू विल बी नोइंग दोज आर नॉट एप्सोल्यूट जीरो इट इज आर्बिट्री मार्क कि दिस इज माई जीरो एंड ना इसके ऊपर कितना गया राइट सो सेल्सियस का जीरो अलग है पैरानाइट का जीरो अलग है तो ऑब्वियसली द स्केल्स आर डिफरेंट बट ईच ऑफ दैम ईच स्केल वेरी डेफिनेटली काइंड ऑफ यू नो मेजर्स द डिग्रीज right so these this is an example of an interval scale okay so jisme uh, zero degree kyun isko kehte hain ki it's interval scale and uh, you know uh, it is called interval scale because aap jab zero degree hai that does not mean zero heat okay it is not zero heat per se so that is why the zero is not very well described in the interval scale but the बिटवीन आप अगर सेल्शियस स्केल लोगे देर इज अ डेफिनेट अगर फाइव टू टेन कितना इंक्रीज हुआ टेन टू फिफ्टीन उतना ही इंक्रीज होगा सो द इंटरवल्स आर फिक्सड ओके अगर टेन डिग्रीज का इंटरवल ले रहे हो कि सो टेन डिग्रीज का इंटरवल जीरो टू टेन सेम होगा टेन टू ट्वेंटी भी सेम होगा ओके okay, कितने हीट देने पे वो इंक्रीजेस हो रहे हैं सो दैट इज ओके सो दैट इज व्हाई द इंटरवल्स के लिए लिटिल मोर सोफिस्टिकेटेड देन अदर टू दैट वी हैव सीन बट इट इज स्टिल द नेक्स्ट वन दैट वी डू दैट इज योर रेशियो स्केल व्हिच इज द हाईएस्ट लेवल ऑफ मेजरमेंट सो एनी टाइम यू आर यूजिंग अ रेशियो स्केल सो व्हेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टेंपरेचर योर केल्विन वाला स्केल इज द uh you know it it is the ratio scale because why is it is ratio because there is a actual true zero point so zero kelvin means your kinetic energy is also zero okay and so like you know true zero exists in the ratio scale similarly height weight length zero length means ki there is no height or matlab zero height means zero okay so height का ट्रू जीरो है वेट का ट्रू जीरो है लेंथ का ट्रू जीरो है सो दीज आर ऑल रेशियो स्केल ओके सो द हाईएस्ट लेवल ऑफ मेजरमेंट विल बी इन रेशियो स्केल ओके सो मूविंग फर्दर नाउ सो स्टेटिस्टिक्स डिफरेंट जो हम नॉर्मल यू नो एकदम बेस लेवल पे जो स्टेटिस्टिक्स कर सकते हैं रेशियो स्केल में एज यू कैन सी you know most of the statistics that we say i can be you know done on the ratio scale okay as compared to the other ones so different uh, you know kaun se scale mein agar aap nominal kar rahe ho to aap se mode nikal sakte ho ordinal kar rahe ho to mode medium nikal sakta hai range nikal sakta hai interval kar rahe ho so similarly so ratio mein you can mostly do all the things that is a possible you know basic jitna bhi aapko statistics karna hai ओके जितने कैलकुलेशंस करने सब रेशियो स्केल में हो सकते हैं ओके बिकॉज देर इज अ ट्रू जीरो व्हिच इज देयर ओके नाउ मूविंग फर्दर द थर्ड काइंड ऑफ यू नो डेटा दैट यू कैन हैव इन स्टैटिस्टिक्स इज द प्राइमरी डेटा बेस्ड ऑन कलेक्शन प्रोसेस ओके सो प्राइमरी डेटा 
and secondary data. Now, let us understand what. It is very easy to understand. I mean, most of you will know this. Primary data is what you collect. Okay. So, if you are in your lab, mein, you know, experiment kar rahe hai, usse aap ko, aap readings and uh, you, know, uh, you are collecting the data, that is your primary data. Sometimes, uh, you know, lot of, uh, suppose you want to uh, talk about air pollution in Delhi. Okay. So, air pollution ka data aap ja ke collect kar sakte ho. Of course, that becomes your primary data. But you can also take it from maybe uh, Central Pollution Control Board, jo hai, CPCB. Uske website mein se bhi aap le sakte ho. Okay. Those are publicly available data which is there. But they have collected. You have not collected. But you can use the data to do your work. Okay. So, that is becomes your secondary data because somebody else has collected and you are using that data from that there to kind of make your you know to do your own experiment and you, you know work on it okay so that becomes a secondary data now uh so basically i've just uh, kind of explained it but that is a basic uh, thing which is there so any student or researcher when they are directly like they are doing the experiment and they are collecting the data themselves okay so that becomes a primary data so primary data can be like you know in any like when you are doing it so it can be a questionnaire which you have made social sciences may a coffee bar even uh, you know uh, aap agar ek survey kar rahe ho, suppose a uh, key pollution may are you to see the effect of pollution on a different you know human Okay, so and you're not a doctor, so you want to collect some data based on what people are saying. So, are you having, you know, you put questions like, uh, what is the, you know, are you feeling stuffy? Do you have a stuffy nose or do you have a headache or do you have this? So, all this data, you have made a questionnaire and you have given it to people and you are, wo jo bhi answer de re, usko aap compile karke apna data, you know, generate kar do. That again becomes a primary data because you have made a question, you have made questions and you have questions based on your data. Okay? So that becomes a primary data, right? So uh, these are the examples that I have uh, you know, put. So, you know, researchers, questionnaires, census, mein jo hota hai, then market research, uh, you know, kafi bar, uh, jo karte hai, you know, they go around the houses and collecting the data, ki aap ye, kaun sa prefer karte ho, kya prefer karte ho. So all those becomes the primary data because somebody who is working on that project has actually collected the data. Now, secondary data, like I said, is not the data that you have generated. If you are the work, worker or researcher, wo aapne nahi generate kiya, somebody else is generated and you are, you know, accessing, you have, you're accessing the data and using the data to kind of, you know, uh, you know, do your work. So that becomes a secondary data. So, like I said, I gave the example of CPCB. So, government websites may kafi bar aise, like you know, health uh, hospitals ke website may ya like you know, government uh, ke particular you know departments hote hai, ministries hote hai, unke website may kafi sara data aise wo hota hai, jo ki aap use kar sakte hai, freely available hota hai, so aap use kar sakte hai, so those become secondary. Then data collected from literature which is already published. Kisi ne already paper published kiya hai. Usme se aapne diya. And these are nothing wrong, okay? These are all allowed, okay? Ki aapne data liya, usko aapne acknowledgement diya ki I have taken this data from this. Or you are trying to see ki suppose um, kafi bar hota hai ki a lot of different people have uh, like you know your uh, making a review kind of a you know a study you are doing so you will take suppose uh, 10 different plants mein 10 different logo ne kaam kiya hua hai but aap ek jagah pe us, usko leke you are kind of comparing okay so what will you do you will take what people have said and you are kind of you know putting that data what they have generated already and kind of putting it together and you know doing your calculations and so those are all called secondary data okay and again from newspaper websites articles you know some uh, things you can be done okay so newspaper website article etc uh kafi bar science ke science mein to nahi ho, hota hai a lot of time uh, biology mein especially shayad nahi ho but uh you know other social sciences and all mein newspaper website articles whatever okay so jabhi bhi data aapne nahi generate kiya that becomes your secondary data okay so these are uh certain uh you know points i have uh 
between like you know difference between the primary and secondary data so uh, primary data ek to uh, generally when people are working they will generate so it is the real time data secondary data mostly will be something which has been done in the past and you're using but the good matlab you know one plus point about the secondary data is that it is a low cost okay jab bhi aapko khud experiment suppose like i said okay i want to check the air quality you know monitor air quality and do some work on it okay i can always go okay and put a, um, some kind of a you know measurement uh, you know kya kehte hain weather stations hote hain so weather station maine apne yahan pe lagaya usme se data collect kiya and i can do it okay but it is obviously expensive because i have to like you know uh, those uh, instruments are expensive but uh, compared to that if i use the data from cpcb side it is much low co- lower cost or it's technically free right aap unke website mein jaiye and it is freely available and you are basically uh you know just pick up the data and it is less time consuming obviously hai na agar aapko data lena hai suppose aap you want to study the you know way some uh, no2 concentration or some concentration in the air and you want to do it across a whole year so aapko pure saal wait karna padega to get that data right but सेम वे आपको पांच साल का एनओ टू करना है और आपने डेटा उठाया सीपीसीबी से सो इट्स लेस टाइम कंज्यूमिंग ठीक है सो देर आर प्लसेस एंड माइनसेस अनदर पॉइंट व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट और डिफरेंस इज प्राइमरी डेटा के साथ यू आर इन कंट्रोल सो यू नो एग्जैक्टली यू नो व्हाट क्वेश्चंस टू आस हाउ यू वांट द डेटा टू बी मेजर्ड ओके बट सेकेंडरी डेटा जब उठाते हैं दैट कंट्रोल इज नॉट दैट बिकॉज यू डोंट नो कि दूसरे ने कैसे कलेक्ट किया दैट इज अ फैक्ट राइट वी डोंट नो हम वहां पे नहीं थे वो जब कलेक्ट कर रहे थे तो हमें नहीं पता सो सो दो आर सर्टन डिफरेंसेज विच आर देयर इन द प्राइमरी डेटा एंड सेकेंडरी डेटा बट बोथ आर यूज वेरी रेगुलरली इन यू नो डूइंग बायोस्टिस्टिकल वर्क और यू नो यूज वी यूज इट रेगुलरली टू डू द वर्क ओके now the next uh, type uh, type the fourth type uh, data can be a time series a data based on collection time time series or cross sectional so ye maine uthaya this is nothing to do with biology but i just found this figure and i thought you know it kind of described it very well uh, that is uh, your cross sectional is something suppose ye sales figure hai something so across the अक्रॉस so, चार सिटीज में इन्होंने दिखाया हुआ है कि अक्रॉस द सिटीज कितना है ठीक है सो दैट बिकम्स क्रॉस सेक्शनल टाइम सीरीज क्या हुआ एक ही पॉइंट का डेटा ओके अक्रॉस द टाइम सो डिफरेंट टाइम इंटरवल्स में अगर आप वो कर रहे हो एक ही ऑब्जर्वेशन को फॉलो अप कर रहे हो दैट बिकम्स अ टाइम सीरीज डेटा ओके अगर बायोलॉजिकल टाइम यू नो पर्सपेक्टिव में कहे सपोज आई एम स्टडिंग यू नो ग्रोथ ऑफ व्हाट सीडलिंग शुड वी टेक लेट्स टेक अ मेज ओके मेज पे यू नो इफेक्ट ऑफ 10 मिलीमोलर नाइट्रोजन एंड आई डू इट यू नो ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम लाइक यू नो मेज लिया मेज को ही मैंने देखा कि भाई ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ मे बी यू नो सिक्स मंथ्स में कितना ग्रोथ हो रहा है मे बी और मे बी थ्री वीक्स में कितना ग्रोथ हो रहा है तो एवरी वीक और एवरी डे आई हैव सम डेटा लेंथ का डेटा या वॉट एवर सो नंबर ऑफ लीव्स का डेटा एंड आई आई जस्ट फॉलो दैट दैट बिकम्स अ टाइम सीरीज डेटा कि आई हैव डन दैट आई जस्ट फॉलो दैट मेज एंड फॉलो डिट थ्रू अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम ओके सो आई हैव अ टाइम सीरीज डेटा बट नाउ आई आई कैन डू अन अदर एक्सपेरिमेंट to show the growth in 10 millimolar nitrogen uh, i can take maize i can take wheat i can take rice okay i can take uh, you know oat and i have four different uh, you know grass uh, you know gramini members and i see their growth after one week after giving 10 millimolar nitrogen so one week ke baad total kitna height unhone gain kiya hai between uh, that one week that i can study so that will be a cross sectional data because that gives me a cross section of the growth pattern ki ha nitrogen sab mein affect kar raha hai so i'll uh, get that question answer to that question 
अगर मेरे को ये पूछना कि भैया एक पर्टिकुलर प्लान में क्या नाइट्रोजन यू नो ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम ग्रोथ को इफेक्ट कर रहा है सो देन द फर्स्ट वन द टाइम सीरीज डेटा मेक्स मोर सेल्स सो लाइक आई सेड द टाइप ऑफ डेटा यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड टू मेक योर एक्सपेरिमेंट स्ट्रॉगर हाउ यू कलेक्ट द डेटा हाउ वॉट क्वेश्चन यू वॉन्ट टू आंसर वॉट यू नो स्टिस्टिकल मेथड और यू नो जैसे हम डिफरेंट यू नो टी टेस्ट करते करेंगे या यू नो कोरिलेशन करेंगे सो so, क्या आप करना चाहते हो आगे का वो विल डिपेंड ऑन द डेटा दैट यू आर कलेक्टिंग ओके एंड दैट इज वाई द टाइप्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सो अगेन लिटिल डिटेल ऑन वॉट सो टाइम सीरीज डेटा इज बेसिकली सीक्वेंस ऑफ डेटा कलेक्टेड एट डिफरेंट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम लाइक इज सेट एंड दिस डेटा पॉइंट टिपिकली कंसिस्ट ऑफ सक्सेसिव मेजरमेंट्स मेड फ्रॉम द सेम सोर्स ओवर अ टाइम interval okay and basically you're tracking a change over time so those are called the time series data the weather data the growth rates of plants and microbes are you know so those are kinds of things which you get in a time series data so i've just put these two examples so it's like a uh, whole day me what is the temperature you know how it is changing so weather monitoring so that is a time scale time series data ओके देन हेल्थ मॉनिटरिंग आप काफी बार हॉस्पिटल्स में यू नो सो यू मॉनिटर्स विल रिपोर्ट की वो एवरी यू नो ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम इट इज कंटिन्यूसली लाइक मॉनिटरिंग बीपी और मॉनिटरिंग हार्ट रेट और थिंग्स लाइक दैट सो दोज आर ऑल यू नो टाइम सीरीज का डेटा देन क्रॉस सेक्शनल स्टडी इज बेसिकली ऑब्जर्व एनालाइज कलेक्टेड एट वन गिवन पॉइंट अक्रॉस द यू नो सबसेट so you can define the substrate uh, you know suppose uh, prevalence of cancer jaise maine isme bataya hua hai okay so you can do a cross section of different ethnicities or different ages okay and find out ki bhai ye prevalence of this cancer at like you know uh, across the ethnicities or across the time uh, age uh you know so that those are cross sectional study so aapko kya karna hai that will define ki aapko time series ka data chahiye ya cross sectional chahiye to us hisab se fir aap data collect karoge right what do you want to do okay so that is uh, the cross sectional studies right so cross sectional studies ka bhi apne like you know there are lot of pluses okay multiple uh, you know फर्दर रिसर्च के लिए बिकॉज आप पहले सपोज यू आर डूइंग अ क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ इफेक्ट ऑफ लाइक आई गेव यू द एग्जाम्पल इफेक्ट ऑफ नाइट्रोजन ऑन फॉर फोर डिफरेंट ग्रामिनेशियस क्रॉप सो यू हैव अनो होल क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ डेटा देर देन उसको फर्दर आपको किसको आगे लेके जाना है और किसको और डिटेल में स्टडी करना है दैट यू कैन डू ओके सो थिंग्स लाइक दिस कैन बी डन सो दीज आर सर्टन यू नो benefits of a cross sectional study because aapke paas uh, you know conclusions jab aap nikalte ho hai na so aap jaise cancer ka bhi bataya so if you do a cross sectional study you will know ki acha okay ye ye this cancer is more prevalent on maybe you know males of a certain age or females of a certain age or something so wo pura data aapke paas aa jata hai and then you can you know uh, be like you know go to more details taking one point and then do a time series kind of a thing okay so that is uh, what is the benefits of a cross sectional study and the last one actually is the data based on sources now this is uh, i feel utna uh, you know biological ya biostatistics mein technically use nahi hota hai because internal data or external data basically internal data will be something which is within the, so if you are generating suppose uh, i i work at an institute and i am generating the data there so whatever data is there generated by within an institute that becomes your internal data okay so what will be the external data obviously the data which is collected from outside the organization okay so ho sakta hai like aap ek institute mein kaam kar rahe ho and they are you are collaborating you have collaborators you know in other institute across india so i'm sitting in delhi i'm collaborating with somebody in madras somebody in uh, bombay uh, mumbai and all that so that those will become my external data if i'm generating the thing uh, sitting in my institute 
and uh, whatever data is generated in that institute it will be my internal data so you can classify your data accordingly but it, it technically does not affect the calculations or anything uh, except that it's one of the you know ways to classify the data okay so that basically finishes my uh, uh, lecture and i hope uh, that i've been able to put across why uh, you know different uh, data uh, you know, uh, knowing different data types is important and what are the different data types, how you can classify and all that. And um, uh, if you have any queries, uh, I have put my email ID uh, uh, there. Uh, so you can take that down. And if you have any queries, please feel free to, you know, contact me. Thank you so much for listening and uh, hope it has cleared few questions that you had about the kind of data. Uh, so um, uh, thank you very much and I really thank the organizers at uh, Zakir Hussain College for giving me this opportunity and uh, you know to get across to all of you and uh, you know talk about uh, certain data uh, types okay thank you thank you